All right, folks, welcome to this new series on weekly paper reviews. So I know on YouTube, there are tons and tons of uh, YouTube channels that go deep into papers, but with the amount of papers that there are every week on AI, deep learning, and in this field, it's hard to go deep on each paper. And especially if you're working, it's you don't get enough time. So in this series, what I'm trying to do is try to identify a few important papers that came during the week, at least important to me, and try to give a gist of those papers uh, so that if it's of interest to you, you can then go deep into those papers. So this series is all about just giving the high level idea of each paper, and I probably won't spend more than five minutes on each paper. So so let's, uh, let's, let's dive in. Um, based on the papers that came out last week, uh, these three struck me. And um, so let's let's jump into it. So this one, Iterative Reasoning for Preference Optimization from uh, Meta is basically about, let's say you have a model and you want to increase its reasoning abilities, its instruction following abilities. So how do you do it in a self prompting or self-learning manner. And the way the authors do this is by using the chain of thought framework. And um, let me show this diagram. Uh, what they do is basically MT is your model. You start with the model. Then, um, and then you also have a bunch of training prompts. So based on those prompts, you will first, using your model, generate chain of thoughts, which you know you, you prompt the model such that it generates those thought arguments. And then using your prompts and the chain of thoughts, generate the answers, again, with your model. Then um, with your model or a better language model, you can reward training prompts, chain of thoughts, and generate answers together so that for each data sample, you get a reward. So the framework for reward is just using a lang language model to judge um, this whole chain of thought reward on a scale of zero to five, and then you know, whatever you get. So, so this gives you uh, some sort of preference pairs because you know higher reward means better results, lower reward not so uh good results and then you and again like you can prompt it by generating multiple times so that you get uh, for us for a similar prompt you get um multiple answers which might have different rewards so you get preference data and then you apply dpo and then they have a a new loss function applied and then you keep doing this process again and again. So again, you only start with a seed data set or seed prompts, and then you let the model generate the uh, chain of thoughts and the answers and the rewards in every iteration. You get the pair, you apply DPO and this new loss. So this is based on a self-prompting paper that came out a few months ago. Uh, the novel idea here is the authors also add this chain of thought in the previous paper, we were directly generating the answers, but here in this uh, paper, the authors add the chain of thought and also this NLL loss. So just to give you an overview, this NLL loss is basically um, some sort of a loss that is directly compared, uh, that directly computed on the winning uh, Ys and Cs. Um, I didn't go into the details of this loss, but you know, it's just, uh, this new loss that's added to the regular DPO. And this seems to do pretty good. And in the abstract, the authors say that, uh, they were able to increase performance on this math benchmark from 55 to 60, 80, 80s. So that's, um, that's pretty good. So this, this is. I see a lot of research in this self-training paradigm, um, which is a bit interesting because 
uh, at least from what I've known about self-training is it's very hard to avoid mold collapse because you know you don't see a lot of diversity so it's interesting how these methods uh, evolve uh, right now I uh, in the paper they go for three iterations um, so maybe you know if, if you stick to lower number of iterations it's good enough um, all right um, so yeah feel free to check this paper out uh, moving on uh, another interesting paper that came out uh, again from meta is uh, this this idea of increasing the inference speed and maybe even performance by doing multi-token prediction uh, prediction so right now llms predict just the, the next token so instead of that what if you made them predict n tokens so uh, i think this image captures it well so um, here we have our inputs and then we have the um, you know your, your decoder model and then in the final prediction head instead of one head if you take the final hidden representation and then map it to four different heads or the lm heads uh, such that they generate the next four tokens and you compute loss on all four tokens uh, then you get this whole structure where each token predicts four next tokens and um, and then that's it's completely up to you if you want to utilize it at runtime or not at runtime you can discard so for example uh, for the input one we immediately generate two three four five and we can immediately discard three four five if we don't want them or use them in a speculative decoding fashion to increase the inference speed so this is pretty useful and um, the interesting thing what the authors see with the four token prediction is uh, the performance. I believe this is like, you know, one of the accuracy metrics, not the inference metrics. Um, let me see. Let me just double check. Um, or, you know, uh, I, I, I believe it would be, uh, I think this performance as well. But um, yeah, because... I see here that 12% um, more problems. Uh, so the authors note that this method is more useful the larger the model. The usefulness of this method increases with the size of the model. It's not so useful for uh, smaller size models, but as we go into the 10 plus billion parameter regime, it is um, more uh, useful. So yeah, so that's that's the general idea. I think you can, if you want to go uh, delve deep, you can check out the math. And um, the training aspect is pretty easy. I think the 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 hard part about implementation for this is um, inference time, because at inference time you would have to loop into uh, self speculative decoding because you know you your model is generating the next few outputs and then you have to speculatively understand, um, measure them or, um, and see if you want to keep them or redo the inference for the second token and so on. Um, okay, so yeah, so that's, that's the general idea about this paper. Finally, um, another interesting paper, uh, which is so this one where the authors just compare applying LoRa to smaller models to compete with GBT4. So they try to see if you take a smaller model, let's say a 7 billion parameter model, and then you apply LoRa to it, how can you uh, beat GBT4 or can you even get to the level of GBT4? So um, uh, I'll just you know jump and they do it like over a bunch of tasks. And this is what they, so these are the list of tasks. You know a lot of like classical NLP stuff, legal document classifications, and so on and so on. Um, and what they find is, I think I believe the answer is yes. Uh, so yeah, you know, different benches say different things, and uh, this this tells you how much lift they get over GPT and over the base models. I believe I don't know if it's fine-tuned or not, or just pure base models. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think this makes sense because 
if you uh, fine tune something that is task specific uh, or rather in a task specific manner it can beat uh, a general purpose model but of course um, fine tuning it for for it making it task specifics will uh, will reduce the generality of of a model uh, and a couple of interesting observations that they, they find that um, this uh, among the 7b models Mistral and Zephyr uh, tend to be the best models for uh, for LoRa which which is interesting and also that uh, the five family of models the smaller ones to be they tend to beat out even the bigger ones the bigger 7b Gemma models so so that's all, that's also pretty interesting uh, so yeah a couple of like very uh, interesting observations in general about uh, LoRa and you know how, when, how it's applied to uh, the different language models so yeah i think um that is pretty much it about what i wanted to talk about so yeah uh, i will try to put out these videos every week with papers that i found interesting just you know just the crux of those papers um and hopefully it will be useful if you find some one of these papers interesting fe please feel free to do a deeper dive um and again like my observations are like very superficial so um if you like something when you it's it's best to read those papers in detail uh to understand um the finer details so um all right um and yeah i, I by the way i forgot to mention so i was um drinking this this beer little wolf which is from uh, oh zero gravity which is one of my favorite breweries in burlington so if you're in burlington vermont you have to go to zero gravity and with that i'll see you guys next time <laughs>